busting his butt and getting me live on air tonight. So it is August 20th, and I want to take some time tonight and get into um, some personal stuff with you uh, and actually bring some light to a, uh, a condition. And if I have time, I'm going to get into a few other things. Uh, but I would like to focus a, uh, a few minutes, at least, on a subject that um, is very, very much personal to me on so many levels. It's uh, it's kind of hard to describe, especially with my brain the way it is. And you hear me mention that repeatedly here on Rabbit Hole Radio for the past year. I've said... Um, I've made reference to that I have a brain injury or a brain problem and that there's a, an issue going on. Well, uh, tonight I'm going to talk about that a little bit and uh, I'm going to bring a little bit of light to it and hopefully this video getting heard and the, the, the audio being heard of me talking and the, the video you're going to see of where I'm going to bring up some pictures and I'm going to show you kind of what the condition is uh, to give a visual for those that are watching on uh, any of the video platforms. If you're watching on any of my three Twitter accounts or over on uh, KGRA, you know, KGRA has got this and um, I'm uh, live streaming to one of my YouTube channels, federal Jack tube six, or just fed tube six or just federal Jack tube six. We should bring you right to it. And, uh, you know, playing around, doing some live testing, uh, live stream testing. And I figured, why not talk about this tonight? Why not talk about this issue tonight? This would be a perfect platform to do it. Instead of me recording a separate video and uploading it, and why not talk about it live right now where people can, you know, hear it and I can actually show the images, give a better visual understanding of what it is. So last year, I was in a car accident. And uh, it was the beginning of September of last year. And I was, in fact, I made, if you go back and you listen to my archives, you'll hear me make mention of it at the end because I actually ended up taking a few weeks off. And it screwed up my whole plan for uh, doing 9-11 stuff for y'all and, and getting into that and playing some really great old school documentaries for you. And now that I have the visual for, uh, platform, uh, that'll be actually even better because then you can go actually not only... If you're hearing the audio, you'll hear the audio as always. But if you're watching live on any of the video feeds, you'll actually get to see uh, the video of the documentaries. Uh, some of these are very old, uh, you know, 15, 20 years old. So it, it's great that I'll be able to bring that stuff to the video platform. But last year, I had planned on playing a lot of the audio and it got screwed up because right in the beginning of September, I got into this bad accident and it it did more damage uh, than we knew initially. And it took them a few months. Luckily I was being seen by a bunch of good doctors and um, they, uh, the, they, they specialize in car accidents and in whiplash injuries and in severe whiplash injuries. And um, which is what I had or what they at, at, at least initially had diagnosed me with. So, uh, through about a period of about five and a half months, they figured out I had some severe spinal issues and some stuff going on with my brain that needed to be checked uh, into further. So they sent me to a specialist. And uh, interestingly enough, I know the specialist because as many of you know, over the years, you've been a listener to my broadcast or followed me on YouTube, you know that Radchick, another YouTuber and old school radio show host, right? And she's been around forever. Many of you remember nuked radio. Uh, she's a radiation expert. She's been interviewed on RT. Well, she also happens to be my spouse and her and I are together. We've been together for seven years now. And about five years ago, she had, um, Back in, it was 2017, so it's been five years. It's amazing this year, like how how long it's been. But five years ago, she had uh, life-saving surgery. And the guy that did this life-saving surgery, because she had um, a broken neck 
And she also had the same issues that uh, I'm currently dealing with. And I'm going to get into all those symptoms and stuff, explain a little bit of this so you can understand. And I have to explain this because I've mentioned it, but uh, it's also because um, I'm having corrective surgery to help fix some of it in about a month and a half. So I f I'm going to be off air for a couple of weeks. And I'm going to have some special stuff I'm going to try to put together. You know, you'll hear some of my good rebroads Bill will put on. But I want to be honest and straight with everybody. That's always how I've been since I've been on air ever doing this. So the accident uh, that she had, the she had a, a work accident years ago. And it had caused uh, two fractures in her neck and, and these injuries, uh, these other brain injuries. And she had to go to a specialist. And the guy saved her life. That would be Radchick, Christina. And they, I knew I was dealing with something serious when the doctor I was seeing here, you know, five years later, I'm in a car, bad car accident. And uh, I was sitting still at a stoplight. It was about 10 cars deep. And the girl behind me, she's about 22, 23 years old. And she was too busy playing around on social media, on her phone and not paying attention to the road. And she was driving a minivan and she plowed right into the back of me at about 40 miles an hour. One piece of advice I could give everybody is get dash cams. Get the good ones where you get her front and her rear. It's like 350 bucks. I know they're kind of expensive, but it's worth it if you get it installed and, you know, done right or whatever. Uh, best money I ever spent years ago in the car because it proved without a doubt that her version of events was not accurate. She was a nice girl. She was polite, you know, on scene and everything. Very apologetic. But she did tell the cops that everybody in front of her stopped and there was no way for her to break. And that wasn't the truth. You could clearly see we all stopped and she just sailed right into me. No, all gas, no brakes. So that, that moment, that accident kind of changed things for me and it caused me to have a lot of issues. And I knew, I knew that there was a problem and I kind of <laughs> Christina and I had talked about me going to get, um, going to see this doctor, this specialist, because she had seen him and maybe talking to him. And I was going to bring it up to the doctor. And the, the next time I saw them, the outside doctor that I was seeing for the car accident, they said to me, I want to send you to this specialist down in Tampa. And I said, huh, he wouldn't be such and such a doctor, you know, and she said, yeah, no, that's that's him. And I said, OK, cool. So this guy is and he's just absolutely amazing. OK. And um, he is it, it, when you read like you could read reviews, you know, on him on Google or, uh, you know, my own personal experience with Christina. The guy's amazing. So I'm glad I'm in his hands. But uh, he has to do surgery on my neck and my brain. So when I say I have a brain injury, um, what I have is called, I have two things. I have a cranial cervical instability, which means my neck, my seat, my spine uh, is not straight. It, it's not sitting correctly. Actually, usually it's supposed to sit like kind of curved like a spring. Mine's sitting poker straight. And there's a bunch of things that are torn in there. Uh, I have ligaments that are torn in my neck. Uh, I have ligaments that are torn in my brain we actually have little ligaments that hold our brain in place that floats in fluid in the brain case and there's tethered in place in a couple spots and i mean this is like a very very you know easy to digest biological uh breakdown of this but it, I, i'm i know that there's probably going to be a doctor or nurse listening going it's not that simple i get it but i'm just trying to simplify it so everybody can because it's kind of complicated. Even even doctors don't understand this situation. They they do understand it more now. I've noticed at least than they did even five or six years ago. But uh, yeah, a lot of people it's still one of those things that when you try to explain it, unless they're experts in their field, their brain, you can see, starts to leak out of their ear. So. In the accident, I had my head turned because I was looking. I had just turned my head to the right to look out my right window and my mirror and my passenger side mirror to check and make sure everything was clear. And that's when she hit me. 
And because my head was turned sideways, I had a lot of things and my neck was turned sideways. There was a, you know, my head didn't go back and forth. It went side to side. So it tore a bunch of ligaments. It tore the ALR ligaments in the right side of my neck, which are what hold your skull and your neck and your, everything in alignment. And it caused me to have uh, three herniated discs and the tears <clears throat> and the ALR ligaments on the right side are causing my C1 and C2, which I will show you all this, the two top pieces of the two top vertebrae that right off the skull, C1 and C2. Um, there's instability there. So C1 slides off C2, so it moves. It's not supposed to do that. And it cuts off blood flow, causes all sorts of weird things, which I'll get into. And it's uh it's a crazy experience is what i can say uh it's it's the only way to describe it um anyway so the way that they're going to fix it uh is they're going to go in and they're going to stabilize my neck with rods and screws uh they and they're and uh, they're going to drill a small hole a little decompression hole in the back of my skull for my brain because the the, the brain injury uh, is there's no brain damage, luckily, but what I have is called tonsillar ectopia. So the cerebellum, the bottom rear portion of our brain, my little tethers, some of them are torn and there's no going in and fixing those. So my cerebellum herniates forward. And when I mean by herniate, meaning it moves and and it'd be easier if, you know, I'm just show you this while I'm talking about it because there's no point in not doing this. I'm going to add this. This is, these are pictures of, I have three different images up if you're watching on the screen right now. I have three different images. I'm going to go over each one here. So this is kind of a visual understanding. So since I'm talking about Chiari, first I'll, I'll go to here. This is a normal brain right here. And as you could see, here's the cerebellum. I'm sure my neurosurgeon would give a way better explanation of this. But the right here at the cerebellum, all right, this is what it normally looks like. And and Chiari can, this is also known as Chiari. Um, Chiari, people can be born with it. There's different versions of what it is. Um, I have... And what Christina suffers from is called traumatic Chiari. So it's from an accident, whereas the other uh, versions of Chiari are actually from uh, people actually being born with it. So there's there's a couple different variations of it. Anyway, so right here, if you're watching the video, I'm I'm showing an image of uh, two brains inside of a human head. And on the left side is the normal side. On the right side is the Chiari side. Now, um, I'm going to do the best I can to explain this so that those of you that are only listening with audio get a good understanding. But the cerebellum, which is the part over for you people watching on the video here that I'm moving the mouse around, the cerebellum here is, in a normal person, it sits right here. It does not move. And you see here, this is the brain stem. It goes down to the spinal cord. There's there's no issues here. See, there's plenty of room in here. It's not hollow. This inner space here that's dark, this is filled with spinal fluid. So when you have Chiari, if you look over here on the right, and for those of you that are listening, the, the spinal cord and the brainstem, uh, they sit in kind of an, an open space in, in your spinal column. Uh, and there's an open space there where the fluid can flow around in and out, and it, it's supposed to move uh, nice and smoothly and flow, you know, with not a problem, no issues, keep a certain pressure, everything balanced, right? Well, if you look over here on the right, the Chiari, uh, some people are born with it where it, 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 their cerebellum, the tonsils are bigger, and it pushes on it. And this is someone who's been, was born with it. 
what I have and what Christina has is called traumatic Chiari. So my cerebellum here tore loose. And what it does is when I look forward or I bend over or uh, really move my head the wrong way or whatever, this will herniate forward into this space here. And you see, as you can see here, if it herniates forward, there's no place for any of this spinal fluid to go. So that creates a problem, creates multiple problems. It pushes on your brain stem, which causes very interesting issues. Um, one of the other things it does is it will not only will it push on your brain stem, but it'll cause the pressure in your brain because as you could see, again, over here in the normal side, free flow of fluid over here on this side, no free flow of fluid. Imagine the pressure that builds up in your head and you can't do anything about it. And it feels like your head is going to explode. And I'm, I'm lucky that I've only had to deal with this for a year. I'm not up here complaining, by the way, either. I'm trying to explain uh, the condition for everybody so everybody has a good understanding. Um, and that way people, you know, get when I've made my references because I've been saying for months I'm going to explain what's going on. And I kind of just bypass over it. But since now I know I'm having surgery soon, uh, I figured I would get into this tonight a little bit and shed some light on what this actually is. So the now that you can see the brain issue here, okay, the way to fix it, as I said, they're going to drill a little decompression hole. So here's the Chiari malformation on this image over here, the second image I've brought I brought up here. You'll see here again. Here is the uh, the cerebellum. And you can see it's herniating into the area in the spinal cord uh, or in the spine itself where the spinal cord is and where your brain stem is. And what they do to alleviate this pressure and bring it back is they, uh, it's not going to be this big, this image is like the old barbaric way. The guy that's going to operate on me is not going to take out a baseball sized chunk of my skull. It's going to be a small hole that's drilled right about here. And it'll relieve the pressure and allow my brain to pull back this way and let the spinal fluid flow freely and alleviate pressure. It'll alleviate the head pain that I have. I already suffer from migraines um, that are connected to my, uh, my time in the military. And... I can tell you that this pain makes my migraines look like a mild headache. Like you would, I don't even need aspirin for that. They're brutal. Um, really don't have a way to describe them other than someone's depending on what, which headache you're talking about. The, sometimes it feels like someone's driving a spike a hot metal spike through my forehead right above my eye. Sometimes it's in the side of my temple. Uh, most of the time, the headache starts in the back, and it feels like somebody... You ever see how Predator takes the skull and the spine of one of its kills? That's what I picture mentally. If you need a visual, that's what I picture is having my spine and skull torn out of the back of my body. And then at the same time, someone's also tearing my brain out of the back of my skull case and the, the brain case inside the skull. It's absolutely just brutal. I don't know how else to describe it. And I don't bitch about it. I don't come on air and complain about it. I just say, oh, if I say something funny or I say a word weird. Uh, and it's it's if you go back and listen to me from like even last year before the accident, you can tell that I'm a little off. I, I hide it really well, but it's there. And what it is, is it, the cerebellum here where it herniates downward, where it's doing this over here. Again, back to the image where you see the cerebellum herniating down, pushing against the spinal cord and the, uh, the right at the tip where it attaches to the brainstem there. All of that, uh, that creates... Um, issues one of the issues it creates is you uh, i have a 
couple interesting things that go on. Sometimes I feel like I'm falling through the floor. Uh, it happens while uh, sometimes I'll be on air and it'll happen to me. And I'm just like in the back of my head, I'll be talking to y'all or I'll be playing an audio clip. And I'm like, no, come on. It's just your brain. It's not real. You have to tell yourself that it's um, it's intense. It's like being on a roller coaster, but you know, you're not on a roller coaster. You can see all around you that you're not, but it feels like you're going up and down or you're sinking through the floor and you can't move. It's it's scary, especially if you don't know what's going on. If you have an understanding of what's going on, it's better because at least you you kind of get it. It's horrible when you don't know what's going on. And Christina suffered with this for years before we we understood what's going on. And there's people that are born with this, so I'm not I'm not complaining. I, I on the relative Chiari end of things, um, there are people that have it worse off, but. Um, at least I have a voice and a good understanding of it. So I can give the, not only could I give it a voice because I was Christina's caretaker for so many years dealing with this and making sure, you know, I, you know, she got whatever she needed or whatever and being, you know, taking care of her with her neck and being there and ha seeing her have surgery and go through all of this. But now I'm living it. So I have like this double understanding from the caretaker position and from the person actually suffering from it now. And it, if anything, the least I can do with my voice is give this issue a voice. Because, again, if I say Chiari malformation, people are going to go, what? Chi what? Chiari? What's Chiari? Chiari? What's Chiari? No, it's, it's Chiari malformation. Or you'll get somebody that will act like they know what they're talking about. You'll have plenty of doctors that either they don't know what they're talking about. So... Uh, you know, they don't even know what Chiari is because I've been told that it's only covered in medical school for about 30 minutes to an hour. And then they move on to cover other things. But uh, there, there's plenty of doctors that don't know what they're talking about. I'll get into that anyway. But I want to finish showing you the rest. So here I have a picture, a third picture I've brought up now. And for people that are listening to the audio, it's an image of just a medical skeleton. And I've drawn on it. Um, to show where they're going to put rods and stuff and, and what the, the vertebrae in my neck and everything are just in case. Cause you know, some people are not familiar with basic human biology anyway. So here on the skeleton, you have C1 right below the skull, C2, C3, and then C4, 5, 6, 7. So what they're going to fuse on me is six of my discs in my spine because the brain thing is it, its own separate issue. I'm actually having three surgeries. So they're going to do one here, one here, and one here. Uh, for those of you listening, I'll explain the three points on the skeleton that I just pointed out. So the first one up top is a little hole. It's going to be about the size of a quarter. And it's not, it doesn't go all the way through. I think it's even actually smaller than a quarter. I don't even think it's the size of a quarter. I think it's maybe a little bit bigger than a nickel. Um, but it's just a small decompression hole. It's not that big and it doesn't go all the way through. It just goes through enough that it removes enough bone. So it doesn't go all the way through the dura. It goes through, but it allows pressure to be relieved. So my brain will go back where it's supposed to go. So I won't sometimes sound like an idiot. I know y'all love me and appreciate me and stuff. Uh, and you would never say that, but and I, you know, a lot of people are surprised when I tell them I even have this going on. But yeah, I can tell it's irritating and it's super frustrating. And Christina can uh, attest there are days that are very rough for me. The in fact, during this week, I had a couple of rough days. And um, I'll get into that, explain what, what that's like. So going back to the model here, C1 and C2, because the ALAR ligaments, and if you're looking at the for those of you listening, the image is a skeleton and we are seeing the right side of its body. So it's facing the, if you were looking at it, the back of the skull would be on the left side and the front of the skull would be on the right side and it's sideways. So it's facing um, left to right. And we're looking at the right side of the skeleton, uh, actually focused in on the neck and the skull. So C1 and C2, because the when all the meat and stuff is attached here, the ligaments that move our skull and rock our head back and forth, right? Mine are torn on the right side, and there's no way for them to fix those either. 
So what they do, if it's really bad, and it depends on what the overhang is, um, they will, they're going to put two screws and it's designated by this just one line here. They're going to put two screws from C2 here up into C1, uh, a lag screw on each side. So if like I was facing down, like if I was laying on my, my face, right? Like picture a human body laying on its face on a massage table where you can see its back. Back of the neck is now open uh, up to the, the base of the skull here, right? So you'd be cut from like about here to here and then no, they're probably even a little further up to about here by where the hole is. So like here all the way down to here, right? And what they're going to do is they're, I'll be laying face down. They're going to put one on each side. So if I, I don't have um, an actual one of like the back of a skeleton, but if you look at the back, if you look at the back of what a vertebra looks like, uh, you'll see they're going to do one on each side and they're going to go um, vertical from going from C2 up into C1. They're going to be lag screws. Uh, titanium lag screws and that will fuse c1 and c2 together so they won't move because right now the the ligaments that hold this right here this is c1 this vertebra right here and the ligaments on this side that are torn don't hold this in place anymore so when i look to the right or i look down or i move my head the wrong way this slides and what I mean by it slides is this slides, this disc here slides off of this one. It slides sideways like this. So, and they, it actually has overhang. And back here on, on the back of the, the spine here, we have, but you don't, they're not here, but you'll, you actually see the, the hole for it over here. Um, and you'll see them, the holes here and here and here. But inside the spine, we have uh, vertebral arteries that run on both sides. And if I, if I look the wrong way and this slips here, the C1 slips here, uh, it puts a restriction on the blood, blood flow to my brain and it causes TIAs, which are like mini strokes. Uh, mine are not anywhere near as what uh, Christina had to deal with. Mine are more like visual disturbances that's how I know, and I can feel it putting pressure, and I'll feel kind of wonky and weird. Um, I've explained this before, but I'll, uh, I'll admit it to you all on air. Um, if you've ever seen the movie Predator, <clears throat> when it's in active camouflage, as it's running through the woods, and it's you can see it reflecting the light, um, I've watched that walk through my living room into my kitchen and I knew it wasn't real. And it was because I actually had turned my head to the right and I looked downwards and this was in the beginning of when I was learning how to deal with all of this. Um, you know, this is, I'm not a professional at dealing with this. No, no one is. So even though I, I, I watched what Christina went through and I knew what the signs were, unless you experiencing it yourself, you really don't have, you, you only have a, a certain level of understanding until, and it's like that with anything, you know, with any illness, you can only have so much of an understanding, even as a caretaker, because you're not the person experiencing it. So I get weird visual disturbances like that. Plus it cuts the blood flow off to my brain, which is a problem. Uh, and you can't have that cervical instability. It, it will cause um, pressure and headaches and it, it, it causes a lot of problems. Uh, so that between that and the Chiari itself, I have a lot of headaches and a lot of other weird things. Um, I call it like, uh, I call it getting stupid. Um, but Christina used to describe it as feeling like you're trying to walk underwater, which is a good description of it. I always refer to it as being in molasses, but she, her, her description is actually pretty fitting. It's like trying to walk underwater and you your brain, like you feel like you, like you feel like the pilot, but the controls are not reacting to the pilot the way they're supposed to be. And the, you know, even though you know you're, you're still you, you're not acting like you, you're not talking like you, you're, you can't even sometimes think properly. Uh, and it causes brain fog. So 
sometimes you'll hear me talk about things and I'll say, uh, hold on. And I'll have to, I'll be snapping my fingers trying to like talk about what it is. And that's because in your mind, right. You know, when you're, you're talking and you're, you're, your brain is doing the thinking like you're not you're not consciously it, it's kind of interesting how we work but you're not you, you are consciously doing it but you're you're thinking about the things that come out of your mouth but like that's the difference between talking and actually thinking and that's why some people talk slower because they think about like a reaction or what they want to say um you you don't have that ability to do things like that. Um, there's a disconnect. You get, like I said, you, you get um, stupid. You, uh, Christina likes to call it being a drunk baby. Uh, and that's, if it's really bad, that's a good way to describe it. Like you, I'm to the point where I won't argue. I know if I'm feel like if I'm out of it, like I'll, like she'll she can guide me to the bedroom and like i'll lay down or sometimes i'll lay down on our couch in the living room um and, and you know if you get like that when it when it gets to that point usually it's because i moved in my head the wrong way or i looked down and i shouldn't have looked down i mean simply the act of bending over to tie my shoelaces has caused me to get jacked up where i end up sleeping for six hours afterwards to recover like you you go into it and you go into the state you could be in christina and i refer to it as having an attack but you go into this state and you you're you know you could pass out in her case she was passing out uh i don't pass out thank god but i get really jacked up like i can't walk i'm bumping into things i get really lightheaded um i have problems thinking straight uh, and, and for for someone who my brain is constantly moving and constantly running like a computer and i i feel like i've just like had that momentum yanked from me at times and i mean it's always there to a certain degree but like i'm i'm a little slower than i was that's why i said mind fog brain fog so like i'll be talking about something i'll be say i'll i could be referencing a word and say i'm i want to think of like the word dog i'll just use something simple but i can't think of the word and it's stupid because i can picture the dog in my head but i can't see the word when your brain tries to find and recall the word it's what i would refer to if i always kind of just picture it in my head as the the smoke monster from lost, you know, that black smoke, it was just a cloud of black smoke. That's what you see. You, the word or what you're looking for is not there. So I'll describe it. And because Christina went through this where she had to survive going through this for years, and then she had surgery and she's been recovering from surgery. She like when she, and she still has, you know, even after surgery, you can still have some of the, her, her attacks were way worse. She was like stopping breathing uh, we had to, you know, get oxygen and call EMS. It was horrible. Uh, mine aren't that bad, but she can, she still has the attack. So she understands it. So if I'm out of it and not feeling good, she understands what I'm going through. So she can help me because she understands it from a deeper level. I'm, I'm lucky that I have her as my support system and that she understands this to the level she does um, because it sucks. And it can, so it can, it, it, the level of support can go from me turning to her and trying to describe the word I'm looking for, right? And explain it to her. And she knows what I'm doing. So <clears throat> to outsiders, it looks like this weird game of um, charades <laughs> where I'm trying to describe a word and she's trying to, you know, throw it out there for me. Um, it's, it is what it is, but that's what happens. And it sucks because, you know, when I do shows with y'all and I come on air, uh, you know, I have to make sure I don't do anything to jack myself up hours before I do the show. Like I have to make sure I have to go out of my way to avoid doing something that could aggravate my neck or my brain. And it's, uh, 
it's not an easy way to live. It's definitely, um, it definitely gets in the way of a lot of stuff. <clears throat> so before I get too deep into the symptoms, I'll finish over here with the, the, the skeleton image, since that's kind of, see, it's sometimes it's hard to keep on track. That was already hard for me to keep on track because I would cover six different points in a conversation. And then you, you give me this to deal with. It's awesome. <laughs> so anyway, so they're going to fuse C1 and C2 here. So that stops moving. You know, I stop having a lot of that, those issues. And then the accident did cause me to have herniated discs down here. I have three of them. So th this one, this one, and this one, they're herniated. So what they're going to do is they're going to fuse C4, C5, C6, and C7 here. And they that will stabilize my neck, which will then get rid of a lot of other problems I have. Like I'm having problems with my hands. Um, <clears throat> I will my hands to do things, but they won't go. Uh, numbness, pain, I drop things, loss of dexterity because my herniated discs are pushing against my spinal cord. So when they put pressure on my spinal cord. It's cutting off. Uh, it's it, it, it's affecting me in the form of like pain and other issues. It causes muscle spasms. So does the the C1, C2, uh, and it's also part of the, the Chiari, but it, um, it causes me to have a lot of issues with my arms and my hands, uh, dropping stuff, my hand, my left arm, sometimes, um, spasms and, uh, like it, I'll knock shit off my kitchen counter. I just super pisses me off. It happens a lot. I break, I break things. Um, super frustrating you know you feel like a, a schmuck you'd rather just like stay at home and not go out in public because i mean it doesn't like freak out it it just does like a i don't know my hand will just be like bam and spaz and it will eat things off the counter if there's something next to it when it does it, it usually has a habit of doing it right when i have like something breakable <laughs> right right at the edge of the counter so what he's going to do here on the diagram Again, going back to the skeleton diagram, he's going to uh, here at seven, six, five, and four. He's gonna put screws in uh, instead of going from top, from uh, bottom up to the top. Here, he's gonna go in and he's gonna put them straight in, uh, a two on each vertebra. So it'd be one on each side again, uh, going all the way down. And then he's gonna line them up and he's gonna put a, a rod that's slightly J shaped in there uh and it kind of curves down here at the end uh my drawing is horrible i did it with my stylus and my cell phone <laughs> so forgive the rudimentary drawing but it's uh the it, you you get the idea but this rod here is kind of slightly j-shaped and he he lines this up to make sure that he gets the perfect alignment and stuff and he does a few things while he's in there. He's going to check my vertebral arteries. He's going to verify the blood flow lost to my brain by moving my neck back and forth. I'll see if he can, if he'll take video for me. <laughs> I don't know if they will, but maybe he will. He's a cool guy. Um, it'd be interesting to have video of that. I don't know if the viewers would want to see that or if anybody would like. I don't know if people are down with live surgery. I know back in the day we used to have the surgery channel. I used to love watching that when I was a kid. And cable first became like a big thing. They, the surgery channel was a thing. Um, I don't know if that's still around, but it was educational. And, uh, you, you know, anyway, you don't want to mess around with your neck. You don't want to um, definitely don't want to screw around with your neck. You want to make sure things are are done proper and the guy that i'm going to see is going to take care of things so i'm going to have screws here and then uh screws four screws here with two rods uh on each side and a little hole here in the back of my noodle where my little alien that pilots my human avatar can get in and out much easier and uh, uh th this will fix me uh this will at least alleviate a lot of my symptoms i'm still going to obviously be dealing with this the rest of my life, but it'll be much better than it is now. Uh, I've had, uh, uh, the, there are a lot of doctors that don't understand this whole thing. When it comes to the neck part, the fusion here, a lot of them are 
freaked out about that. They, oh my God, you're going to be a robot. You're never going to be able to move your neck. Well, yeah, I'm not going to be able to bend my neck certain ways and have to learn to bend at the waist for a lot of things. I can't touch my chin to my chest now. If I do it live while I'm on air with you and I'm talking to y'all, if I, if I tilt my, my neck down too far, I'll have an attack while I'm live on air with y'all. And I, I, I'm obviously not going to do that, but that's the limitations I have now. I can't turn my head. There's a lot of things I can't do. So, um, this is what I've been dealing with the past year. So when I make reference on air, um, for those of you that are tuning into the, the KGRA broadcast end of it and on KGRA, or you've listened on my Twitter accounts, um, you know what I'm referencing over the past year. I've made reference to, I'll make comments here and say, Oh, I've, I'm some, you know, I'm dealing with a brain issue just, uh, you know, or a brain injury. Don't, you know, don't mind my messing up a word here or there. For those of you listening over on uh, Federal Jack Tube 6, I know this is probably new to a lot of you because uh, this is, like I said, this is the first, I'm doing a test stream over there while I'm doing the live broadcast on KGRA right now. And uh, so this is probably, you know, new news to you. And I'm sure some of you are probably bored out of your mind. You're like, where's the conspiracy? Well, sorry, this is a real world thing. And I figured I might as well share my own problem that I'm having with you so I can then also shed some light on it for people that suffer this. Cause there's a lot of people that go through this and their doctors don't understand. So now that you have a better understanding of this and you have a better understanding of what I'm dealing with again, you know, here's the, the, the Chiari and you can see normal person versus somebody that's got Chiari. Again, this is the image that I, I was able to find uh, was of somebody that was born with their Chiari. Mine is, considered traumatic so my my uh cerebellum isn't as large or enlarged as uh the one in the image there but um it does herniate because yeah see in in some of the people that are born and it, it, it affects them differently there's different categorizations of it um like levels, like, you know, like uh, one, two, three, four, like that. But um, mine isn't like enlarged. What happens again is the, the little tethers that are holding my cerebellum in here uh, are broken and forever. That's irreparable. So they slide forward and they cause that. So that brain decompression here is going to help fix that. And hopefully that'll get rid of the, the brain fog. And I, I mean, I know seeing what he did for Christina, he saved her life. Um, and he saved her life when nobody else even wanted to touch her or deal with it or even talk about it. I mean, it was, it was a, a living hell for her and it was, a I mean, it was hell for me to watch, but I, you know, and it was hell for her to experience on a level that you can't comprehend unless you've even gone through something like this, you know? And, um, she, this guy saved her life. So I have no worries about the surgeon. He's going to do a great job. But, um, it is, uh, it is a, some, it's a, a topic and, um, it's something that people really don't know much about, including the medical establishment. And it's, uh, it's scary when you think about that, that, doctors really don't know much about Chiari and Chiari malformation, uh, but they don't, they don't know anywhere near what they should know about it. Unfortunately. Um, I've run into a few that, you know, they think they, they wrote a, uh, I had one doctor who I had to deal with um, through and um, through the, the VA medical system. I'll just leave it at that. And um, he didn't agree um, with the diagnosis of the specialist. And the, the, the reason that they sent me actually to the specialist in another section of the state down by Tampa uh, and not to um, my local, meaning they, meaning the doctors that were taking care of me outside of the Veterans Administration, because you all know I'm a vet. Um, the 
the doctors outside, okay, didn't want me to go through the VA system because they said to me flat out, this is out of their wheelhouse. They're not going to be able to deal with this. And I already knew that, but I had to submit all this, you know, let them know what was going on. And um, I got into an argument with one of the doctors that thought he knew much better. Uh, and long story short, he lied, you know, oh, he wrote a book about the subject, but he didn't write a book about the subject. It turns out he only wrote a paragraph in a periodical. Uh, and you run into that kind of attitude. I bring that up because, I mean, we ran into that with Christina too. You'd go see a, a neurosurgeon or a neurologist and they would, you can't be having all these symptoms because your symptoms don't match a chart. Your symptoms doesn't, uh, if you, if you looked on like doctors, when they, 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 it's on a computer now, they used to have like paper, laminated paper, but, um, you know, they basically, it's to simplify it. It's like, do you have a runny nose uh, and a cough? Okay. Well, you have a cold. Do you have a runny nose cough and you're wheezing in your chest? Oh, maybe you have the flu or oh, you have really bad wheezing in your chest. Maybe you have pneumonia, you know, like I know that's simplified, uh, but they, they have like boxes you, you got to check off and, oh, when you checked off these five boxes, it means you have X, Y, Z. Well, they don't know what to do when you have like two boxes from column A, two boxes from column B, and two boxes from column C. It's supposed to be A, B, or C. It's not supposed to be A, B, and C. And they don't know how to deal with that. It, it literally, it sends them into a tizzy and if you research, that's why you'll see this meme now where people are like, oh, you know, uh, people Google their symptoms. And there are people that will just, go, you know, they stub their toe and they Google it and they, they they go off, you know, oh, my God, it says here if I have toe pain. Well, yeah, be, yeah got to be realistic. Use a little bit of logic. But they use that meme and those they will always focus on that instance of that individual to vilify anybody doing their own research. Because they don't like when you know what you're talking about when you go in and you talk to a doctor. And Christina used to be in the medical field in real life back in the day. Uh, and she's talked about that on her broadcast. Um, and she was just blown away by how you're treated. She's like, this is not how you're supposed to treat patients. They don't listen. And they they get really intimidated because... <clears throat> she can speak medical ease, you know, just like there's legal ease. So there's like medical ease. So you know, she speaks all of the, she understands and can speak all of the nomenclature very, very fluently. And it's interesting to watch. Uh, it, it's, it's super cool to watch her do it. But when she does, the doctors get super, super intimidated or pissed off. And we understood because we did have some good doctors along the way that had ordered tests and helped her. We had a basic understanding of what was going on. And that's what led her to find uh, this doctor, uh, you know, and he saved her life. And the doctors that we were dealing with, I mean, they were telling her not to get the surgery. We, after we saw this surgeon, <clears throat> And we, we took his report and this guy's thorough. You know, you go to the doctor now, it's, you know, five minutes with your doctor. You see a specialist, maybe you get 10 or 15 and they're out. This guy does like seven hour appointments where you're the only appointment that day. Or if he does appointments, it's, there's maybe two in a day where he sees someone in the morning and then he has you come in in the afternoon. But we were there. Uh, till almost like it was like 7 30 quarter to eight when we left their office for my appointment and the appointment was at <clears throat> I, they they had done me a favor because we had a travel so far um via car it takes about two and a half three hours to get there so they uh they ended up staying late we, we had a late appointment and i think they had one other appointment and it was like they they pulled like a 14 hour day for two people that's unheard of. He'll sit with his patients for hours and he's very, very good at what he does. And he's a specialist. He's been doing this for a very long time. He's got patents on um, some of the devices, not only the surgical devices they use to do these surgeries, but like the screws and the rods and stuff that they use that are patented by him because he, you know, invented better versions of what they were using over the years. 
He has a degree from, I believe one is, one's MIT and I believe the other one is Yale. Either Harvard or Yale. It's one of the two. I think it's Yale. Uh, one is in medicine and the other one is in engineering. And he got the degrees at the same time. That's how smart this dude is. So when he speaks, I listen because he's a smart man. That doesn't mean I I, I, I would agree 100%. Like I have to just sit like, you know, Pavlov's dog and wait for the, the you know, okay, say something and make me happy and I'll wag my tail. It's not like that. He's just a very well spoken and educated man. And he's got a lot of experience doing what he does. And he's the guy that you go to when no one will listen to you. And if you read the stories, if you go and you read like the stories about this guy, uh, you would see like the comments, everyone's comments are always the same. You know, it's doctors didn't understand what was going on for years. This guy solved my problem. And it's the same story over and over and over again, because they don't understand what cranial cervical instability is. They seem to have an issue understanding anatomy and basic human biology and mechanics. See, the problem is they focus on like the, the biology part of it. And they, they don't focus on the mechanical engineering part. His brain does both because Again, he's medicine and engineering. So he understands it from this interesting perspective of an engineer and from a medical professional. So he's looking at it both ways, not just one or the other. And unfortunately, a lot of these doctors today, especially the younger ones, they're only taught to look at it as one way. And it's, oh, well, you know, I would never do that surgery on you. I had one doctor say, I would never do that surgery on you. And I'm like, well, I'm not asking you to do the surgery on me. You're a resident. I wouldn't want you to do the surgery on me. You'd probably kill me. So, yeah, you're not doing it. You know, like it, it's ridiculous. And they're intimidated. Uh, I, I got into it. One of the one of the sets of imaging that this doctor uses is called um, upright phonar MRI. And another um, uh, device that's used is called a DMX, a digital motion X-ray. Um, DMXs are extremely, extremely interesting machines. And, um, they, uh, the, uh, the DMX machine, if, uh, some of you that are old enough to remember, um, the original total recall with Arnold Schwarzenegger, where he's running through the airport and he runs through like the full body x-ray scanner and you see him moving, you see all his bones moving. That's what it is. It's a digital x-ray at a, um, not at a very high power. That's why fluoroscopy always ended up blurring out because it was too high powered. It's a much lower powered um, x-ray. I mean, radiation's bad. Any, any, you know, I don't like radiation, but in this case, they needed to have this done. So it's uh, a series of x-rays, uh, a lower level of radiation, and it takes it while you're moving. So, you know, he has you... Uh, the doctor that does this has you go up, tilt your head up, tilt your head down, tilt your head to the left, right, whatever, move around, or, or whatever body part you're going to have him look at that he, you've been sent to. And he's another specialist. He's actually the guy I saw is the gentleman that invented the technology uh, that is used currently, including by Walter Reed uh, Army Hospital. Um, and uh, it's uh it's funny because the VAs, a lot of the VAs don't know about it, or if they know about it, they they'll give you the the following line, which is what was said to me um, about the upright MRI. That well, the FDA doesn't, and then I, I shut off as soon as I heard the like the beginning part of that sentence. I heard the FDA doesn't, and I was like, well, I don't really care what the FDA does or does not do. Um, I really don't care at all. The, the you know. The, the FDA, they don't believe that there's any difference in taking uh, images um, while you're moving, like the, the DMX. They, they don't like that. Um, interestingly enough, a lot of judges, when it comes to cases, um, not only with um, like personal injury cases, like if you get hurt in an accident and you sue the insurance company, but in cases of going to disability and stuff, um, I have been told that judges do not like DMX and they will like throw it out because um, they, they'll go, they always give some lame reason. Um, but it's obvious because DMX will show you 
of what the issue is and what the problem you're going through is. In fact, while I'm talking to you, what I'm going to do is I have a video. Not, I'm not going to show you my DMX, but I have a video. Um, let see if I can find it while I'm talking to you. Of Dr. John Pastelways. He's the guy that, oh, here it is. Boom. He's the guy that, um, he, he is the guy that did mine, but also he's the guy that, um, I'm trying to do two things at once here. It's hard to do this. See, I told you I can't, I used to be able to do like six things at once. Like it's hard for me to do like two things at once. Uh, Dr. John passed away. is the guy who invented the DMX machine as it is currently used. And, um, what I'll do here is, let me see if I can, I will just bring this over to here and then, all right, cool. Boom. I'm going to add this really quick so you can see it and I'm going to mute it. All right, maybe I'll let John talk for a minute. Let's see. Um, I want you to see what it looks like. Really? I don't really need to, you don't need to hear what Dr. Past always has to say. He's a really great guy, but Really what you need is to see this. Hold on a second. Let me just. The reason I want this up here. Okay, hold on. I'm going to let it play. So now this, he's using this video he made a probably, I don't know, 10 or 12 years ago. I, I actually have this up on one of, I think it's Federal Jack Tube 6. This is on the channel I'm live streaming to on YouTube right now. But you can see this is what a digital motion x-ray looks like. So you can see. As the person's moving, okay, you can see how he'll have them shift, move around, or whatever, and you look, you can see the bones move, all right. So it takes the images, and then the computer program makes a video file out of it for you, so you can actually see like what's going on. Whereas a, a standard X ray is just an image in real time; it's a it's a snapshot. It's not a moving image this you get a moving image and here he's showing difference between like mris and stuff but like you'll see uh, y y you're able to see it's not the level of radiation is lower than a fluoroscopy used to be so you can actually see into the neck you can see the bones better you can see the alignment and how the guy's alignment is off and he explains all that but i want you guys just to be able to see uh, what it looks like when people are moving and what they do is they have a little video image down here they have two cameras they have the machine and then they have a camera so they like whoever this is submitted to can clearly see this is you because you're moving and as you're moving the neck the x-ray image is moving in the same way so you can see she bends her head back and goes back to the upright position it's kind of cool it's really cool technology they don't like this uh the reason why the medical industrial complex doesn't like this is because you can diagnose problems with it and so why insurance companies don't like it. And you can see like she's moving back and forth. You can see like the, all the bones in her neck, her jaw moving. You can see that there's, and he's pointing out how she's got misalignment. And you can see it's actually like sliding the back. Her skull back here is moving around as she's tilting her head back and forth. And uh, that's what was going on with Christina. Mine doesn't, mine moves, but not as bad as this lady's in this image. Um, but that's what, this is what a DMX is. So this is one of the sets of uh, technology they don't like. The other one is called a phonar, an upright phonar MRI. So I'm sure many of you listening or viewing this have had MRIs. So you go and you have uh, an MRI, right? You they lay you down on the table, they slide you into the big donut, and you know they wear the machine up, and then you know they do your MRI. Well, an upright is you actually sit, and the MRI machine is about. I would say probably about four times the size of a standard MRI machine. It's massive. And you actually sit in this little metal, uh, reminds me of a jump seat on a plane. And it's uh, just this little metal plate that you kind of, you sit on, it's got some padding and, and they, they give you a bar that you can rest your arms and everything on. And then they, they have you get your head, they get your head in position. And what they do is they, they MRI you, but instead of you laying down, because remember, you're dealing with your brain and a herniation and stuff like that. And, and the structural integrity of your neck, you really can't look. If you look at your neck, I had to actually explain this to one of my VA doctors, which I 
shouldn't be the one explaining anything to the surgeons. But I was arguing this point with them. And I said over, he actually decided to engage me over an MRI versus upright versus laying down and whether or not, you know, it mattered. And I said, well, if you were going to test the structural integrity of a column, would you do so with the column laying down on the ground or would you stand the column up and put force on it? Or would, you know, I mean, if you were going to lay it down, you, you could mimic force on the column by squeezing it from both ends, but you don't do that in an MRI laying down. They don't squeeze both ends. They don't put pressure to simulate. They, they do have an MRI machine now that can do that, that can simulate pressure, but upright MRIs do it for you. You just sit upright and whatever the person's dealing with while they're sitting upright or standing or walking, you will see. So they have you sit up straight and they have you tilt your head forward and they'll have you move your head back. And they do, um, depending on what the doctor uh, and his protocol call for. So uh, they did this upright MRI of my brain. And that's where they you could see as they had me move forward, you could see my cerebellum herniate. So, um, you know, these these types of images are what is needed to be able to actually figure out what's going on and to be able to um, diagnose the issue. And unfortunately, the medical industrial complex, they don't want to touch it. And you'll have doctors that'll make fun of it like it's stupid or silly. I mean, I had this, this kid couldn't have been, I mean, he obviously he's gone through medical school. So he's probably in his like his early thirties in his residency. And he, it may, you know, maybe like late twenties, early thirties. And he, um, he was just a cocky little bastard. And he did not think that there was any use in getting an MRI standing, you know, sitting upright. It, it would, there's no difference. And I, and when I, quizzed him on it it was well because the fda you know when you your go-to to back your argument up is a government source i'm gonna put my hand up and just hoist the bullshit flag and that's how it is because i mean if you haven't learned in the past few years through the uh, pandemic about how reliable they are as a source then i don't know what to tell you but um I, as soon as you break out like the FDA or the CDC to me, I'm like, stop right there. <laughs> stop. I don't want to hear it. And I, I said to him, you can't give me any better source than that. I said, well, the FDA says that there's not a difference. I said, of course, they're going to say there's not a difference. There's a huge difference. I said, you you didn't pick up anything on the MRI that uh, of me laying down. They did a, an MRI of me laying down there. Everything's fine. You're fine. And I'm like, I'm not fine. I'm experiencing problems. And that's why I ended up, because it was a car accident, I ended up going through an outside doctor, a, what I call civilian, not a VA doctor. And the civilian doctor was like, yeah, you're out of their wheelhouse. You're, I wouldn't send you to go even see the surgeons over there. They're idiots. I, I mean, it, 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 he didn't really call them. That's a little, a little hyperbole, I, I guess, uh, uh, or, you know, a little bombastic on my part. He, he didn't... It, they didn't describe them as idiots. Um, it was actually she, and she said, um, well, she said that she used, she was polite about it, but she basically said that, yeah, they were idiots and that they, I'm way above their pay grade. Like they understand the basic stuff. You need a specialist. And when she said that to me, I was actually, I wasn't like high-fiving her. It was like, Oh, Oh crap. You know, and then I went and saw him and I, I honestly, I thought the most he was going to tell me was, oh, maybe you need, yeah, maybe you need C1 and C2 fixed because I could feel it. I could feel it when it pops. I can feel it when it moves, causes me tons of pain, massive headaches, you know, loss of use of my hands. Um, sometimes I have attacks. The other day I had a really bad one. It put me down for, I took me a couple of days to like get back from it. It really knocked me on my ass. It's probably the worst one I've had. And they'll only get worse as I get older. You know, I'm getting older now. I ain't no spring chicken no more. And I'm doing this a long time now. So <laughs> they're not a spring chicken anymore. And um, it's going to catch up to me. And the old, you know, this guy's going to retire eventually. You know, to, to put it into perspective, to understand what would make me want to go through with such a drastic surgery that I'm going to have. When Christina was having her issues, 
right? We couldn't get any doctors here to take her seriously. We had one guy, and of course, that doctor, um, you know, he was great, but he was even he even said, you know, I, you're you're out of I, I think it it has to do some of your issues have to do with the um you know, which what turned out to be Christina's um issue that she's got with her vertebral arteries in her neck, which I explained earlier, the ones that run up through the spine. Uh, he was great for that, but like he even said, you're out of my wheelhouse. You need a, a, a like a deeper, deeper specialist. And then the other people didn't want to take any of that seriously. It's amazing how many doctors like don't take other doctors seriously or, you know, there's ego. Oh, the, the egos on some of these doctors is amazing. And, it, you know, it took her, re she was reading a Daily Mail article on her phone and about a lady in England who was having the exact, like she was reading this article and they were like, Oh, this weird medical mystery. And this woman's issues were the exact same thing. So Christina hit her up on Facebook. They became Facebook friends. And she said, yeah, I think you probably have what I have here. I'll give you the information to the doctor that, you know, I, that is doing surgery on me. And this guy was in Spain. So she contacted this doctor in Spain and we sent her stuff via email i compressed everything into you know zip files and sent it over to them all her imaging and her medical files and he diagnosed her for free he didn't charge her this guy's a surgeon he's a neurosurgeon he's a, like a renowned neurosurgeon in spain he diagnosed her for free because they understand that there's that many people that there's a lot of people dealing with this issue and there's not a lot of people that understand it in the medical world he understands he's like few one of the few very few people that gets it. So this guy, out of the kindness of his heart, he spent three days going over her stuff, diagnosed her and said, obviously you're too far. You're probably too far to fly over here for surgery from America. But I happen to know of a surgeon in America that I would recommend you to see. And he's the only guy I would recommend you to see. And it happened to be this neurosurgeon. And we took her to see him and he saved her life. This guy's a miracle worker. Well, he's not going to be around forever. He's going to eventually want to retire. He's getting older. So I have to take that into account. I can't put it off and be like, oh, well, <clears throat> you know, I'll have somebody fix me down the road. I ain't having the B squad or the C squad work on me. If I'm going to have my all that one I just showed you, if I'm going to have, you know, four of my uh, or, well, four of my lower discs and my two of the the upper ones all fused together if i'm gonna have six of my cervical discs fused that's big that's a big deal if i'm willing to do that there's got to be a reason i'm willing to do it well i'm getting older you know i i sat down and he there's two options he offered me and i chose what i'm getting done because i said to him what's gonna last longer and he's like the rods and i was like well we're doing the rods and we'll just do it all at once Otherwise, I'd have to have multiple surgeries like where he did. Uh, he, he could put in those fake discs that they put in there. Um, I, I don't want that. That stuff breaks down over the course of time. And it's always better to keep what you have. Uh, and you know, if he has to put in something fake, you know, then he will. If he has to replace one when he gets in there and he feels, oh, this really needs to be done, then he will. But I picked you know, he offered me two options and I picked all the, the rods and the, the fusion because it'll last longer. I'm in my mid forties. I got to think about like, I'd like to live to be like 80, 85. You know, I have two beautiful little granddaughters. I'd like to, you know, be old enough to one day, maybe see them get married and start their own little family. You know, I'm a young enough guy and Christina's young enough that the two of us, you know, we, we have, you know, we have time that we can, you know, we'll be around for that. Well, I, if I don't get this taken care of, I might not be around for it. And, you know, if the specialist retires and who am I going to go to get my, you know, my vessel, my body fixed, I need my avatar fixed somewhere. And I'm, like I said, I'm not having the, uh, the C squad or the B squad do it. So it's going to have to be the A squad. So I, I know I'm, I'm probably, um, boring the living crap out of a lot of you uh with this and uh i know it's not as fun as conspiracy stuff i know this is more personal and probably like uh boring but 
I, I needed to, I wanted to talk about what I was dealing with. And then I wanted to shed light on like Kiari itself and these issues, because there's so many of you out there that could be listening, that could be even dealing with this and you might not know it. Uh, and I would, you know, I used to say, go to chiropractors. I would still say, go to chiropractors. I mean, the guy that invented the DMX, Dr. John Postaweth, he is a chiropractor, but he wouldn't, if I went in there and I told him, oh, my neck hurts, he wouldn't try to do an adjustment on my neck to make it feel better. Um, chiropractors are not quacks. There is a a science behind what they do. But if you have a neck issue, I, I don't, you know, I used to say go to chiropractors. I would go to a chiropractor, but only for like the shoulders down. I wouldn't go for your neck. It's too risky. I mean, there's too many people. You There's been a couple of people. There was a model like a year or two ago or a couple of years ago. And then there was just a guy just recently within the past couple of weeks, same thing. Um, they got the, what is it? Aortic dis dissection. No, that's the coming out of the heart. It's one of the ones up in the, uh, the, in the neck. You, well, they can, they can blow the vertebral arteries. I think that's what happened to the one guy. They is he, he blew her vertebral, uh, his vertebral arteries. And I think that's what happened to the model too. Um, I forget what it's called. But it's got a fancy scientific name to it that my Chiari brain cannot recall right now. It's been a long day. <laughs> and my uh, my brain fog is hanging out in the, the back of the room there. But um, the chiropractor jacked this dude's neck up. And uh, he ended up, I think he's still alive. I think they were able to save him. Uh, but he ended up get, having brain damage was the latest one. And then, you know, that, that model she he did a neck adjustment on her a couple of years ago. There was a guy and he ended up killing her. I think he actually severed both her vertebral arteries. It's just, it's dangerous. You know, you, you want to go get an adjustment on your back. You want to get an adjustment on your, you know, even your back you should be careful of, but I mean, you're, I have had adjustments on my back and they do work, but uh, still I'd be careful with that. But you want to do like a knee or a foot or a hand or an elbow or shoulder. That's fine. I would not recommend the neck anymore. I just wouldn't. And I, I, it's, it's having an issue is with your neck is, is uh, Christina and I joke about this. Like we'll see movies and you'll see guys like in a fighting scene, <laughs> you'll see somebody like, you know, like grab someone's neck and throw them by the neck. And you're like, that guy's dead. You know, he gets up and he like runs around and you're like, there's no way that dude, that dude, there's no way that guy's getting up from that. You know, uh, just, it's not happening. You know, you'll see a, you know, something happened, they'll have like an accident in the movie and you're like, oh, he's got Kiari. When we joke with each other, we're like, oh, he's got traumatic Kiari. Um, you, you just notice that kind of thing more. You're very, I'm a lot more protective and guarded uh, about everything. But what I do, situations I put myself in, because it's much harder to even like defend myself to a certain degree. You get hit in the neck with something like this, it, you could, it could kill you. And there are people walking around like this that don't know it. Really, there's a lot of people that are walking around that don't know it. The best advice I could give you is on your auto insurance, have a, a decent amount of medical coverage. Make sure you know what your, your laws are in the state, you know, in regards to your insurance and your medical coverage. Even if it's more expensive, trust me, you don't want to not have the insurance coverage. Because if the person that hit you doesn't have insurance coverage, you're going to be solely dependent on whatever you have for your medical and you're going to need it because it's not something that, you know, they love to blow it off. Let's just whiplash. You, do you understand what whiplash is? Do you understand it's like your brain getting rocked inside your brain case and slapped around, causes concussions, injuries to the neck? I mean, it could, it's serious. It's it's extremely serious. You know, it's it's not something to joke about. If any of you have ever been in an accident, any of you listening or see this later on, if any of you have ever been in an accident, I suggest you go get it checked out, see what's going on. You know, it, it, the, the best advice I could give you is don't take it lightly. Don't take for granted, oh, it's just my neck's a little sore, I'm okay. 
I'll be fine. I'll take some Tylenol. And if you're having issues, I'll, I'll explain some of the issues that you deal with when you have, if you, like what I've what I've gone through uh, with this, and maybe it'll help. If you're experiencing any of the things that I describe, please, like seriously, see, go see a doctor. Like seek medical attention. You know, go talk to your primary. Maybe you can get into a good neurologist. You can get tested. There's a lot. They understand this a lot more, and the more that people talk about it and share this stuff, the better understanding I think everybody will have. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to sit down and be real with you all tonight and talk about this, share this. This is like super personal shit. I'm not coming on here like, oh my God, 9-11, oh, JFK. I'm sitting here talking to you about and showing you pictures of like what's going to happen to my neck and my brain and what I'm currently dealing with. I'm sharing some very personal stuff, uh, but I'm doing that in hopes that I can shed some light again on this subject because there's so many people that don't know, you know, I, if I say, oh, I have traumatic Chiari, you know, so I always just say I have a brain issue or I have a brain injury. You have to simplify it because you say Chiari, people go, what? What's that? And I, I'm certainly not going to say well, I have tonsillar ectopia. That's, you know, the medical term for it. Chiari is much easier to say. Um, and that's way easier for somebody to digest, even though it sounds weird. It's the, that's what the condition is called. Uh, and when you say that to people, there's a, now I find more people. Yeah. Oh, Chiari malformation. Oh yeah. That's serious. Yeah. So they understand that now, but it's still just the, you know, big, you just the big toe in the, in the shallow end of the pool of understanding of it. There are, there are people that have a deeper level of understanding, you know, they're in the deep end of the pool. That's the guy that's going to fix my neck. But a lot of doctors don't understand this because the, the symptoms, like I said, they don't fit into, you know, column A or column B or column C. It's a little of each and that throws them off. And instantly, if, if it's something that doesn't fit in column A, B or C, you're faking, you're making it up. Uh, you know, I mean, we, there were plenty of times I took Christina to the ER and we had to fight with the ER staff you know, just to get her to be seen. Cause they were like, Oh, you were in here a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And she was, she was brought in via like ambulance. You know, I brought her in a few times. She was brought in via ambulance a few times. I mean, you shouldn't have to fight to get medical care. I know for those of you outside of America and I'm not promoting socialized healthcare. I mean, the government run healthcare kind of sucks. It'd be easier if they just gave everybody a card uh, and, you know, dealt with the billing on the back end and you didn't, you, you could just go to the doctor of your choice, but that's, that's some fantasy world crap right there. Um, socialized medicine, uh, to a degree, I guess you could say sometimes it's better, but it's, uh, in some ways you could say it's, it's better. Um, look, everyone has coverage, but you guys have issues with socialized medicine too. I mean, Canada, you know, you've got to wait months and months for a surgery, uh, just to get it. But I mean, our medical industrial complex is a joke over here. Uh, they only care about making money and the, the medical industry is not what it used to be. There are people that go into it with good intentions, but there are a lot more people that go into it to be a doctor because, oh, it's cool. I'll make money and I'll be rich and I'll have, you know, fancy car, cool, you know, nice credit card and a cool phone, nice house. I'll, I'll marry a model wife. You know, that's the meme and they don't care. And uh, uh, what are they being taught in school? You know, we see what's being pumped out. We see the kind of teachers that are teaching nowadays. So what's being, what's coming out of medical schools? I mean, you see the, the woke ideology has hit law schools. The future lawyers of America have this idiotic woke ideology. Imagine what the doctors have. And the younger ones, a lot of them are very, they're, you know, they're by the book. If they, if it, if it falls out of the, you know, A, B or C column, if it can't fit into that, then you, they don't know what to tell you or you're faking. They're taught that you're faking so you can get pills, you know, like in Christina's case for, it took us a couple of years and I could tell you, and every time that we ever went to the hospital, never once did she ever ask for pills, but it was always like the first thing they insinuated. And we'd be like, we don't want any of your friggin' pain medication. You can keep that. That's not what we're after. We're trying to figure out what's going on. They couldn't do that, but they always instantly first went to, I mean, you're trying to get drugs. They're 
because that's what they're taught. They're just like the cops, you know, they go to instantly, you know, either tase or shoot you because that's what they're trained. It's the same thing with doctors. It's instantly the go to you're you're faking it and you're either faking it because you want drugs or you're faking it because you're trying to build a case for disability. That's the other thing they'll 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 say and they'll say that they'll put that in your medical record. They'll write, oh, I think I, I think, you know, person X, whoever it may be, is faking it because trying to build a disability case or they call it doctor shopping because you go to one doctor and they can't figure out what's going on. So you go to a different doctor. They, they actually look down on you for that. They say, oh, well, you're doctor shopping. You're trying to build a case. You're trying to, no, we're trying to figure out what's wrong. Can you imagine you bring your, you like apply that to your car. You go to one mechanic, you know, your car is having major problems, right? Your car is not working. You bring it to a mechanic. He's giving you all sorts of BS. Say, oh, we'll do this. We'll do that. But, blah, blah, blah. but it's not fixing the car. Right. They do all sorts of tests on it. They they may do this procedure, that procedure, but it's not fixing the issues at all. It's, you're still having the same problems, but they've done thousands of dollars worth of diagnostic testing. And then they tell you, well, we can't figure out. We don't think, you know, we're not really sure, but we don't think there's anything wrong with you. <clears throat> Meanwhile, you're passing out. You're stopping breathing. You're having these issues that you have with Chiari. You're having ataxia. Christina used to just turn her head the wrong way and pass out, cut off the oxygen flow and or the, the blood to her brain, which would shut her brain off and she would stop breathing. So she would just drop like a sack of potatoes. She'd turn her head the wrong way and phew, just before surgery. Like a sack of potatoes. And they were telling her that there was nothing wrong with her. She was making it up because they couldn't figure out what was wrong with her. But damn, did they like to run the tests when she had insurance. They liked to be able to bill her insurance for that, didn't they? Oh, they loved billing the insurance company, but they couldn't figure out what was going on with her. So at the end, you know, uh, they would they would say, well, we couldn't find anything or you'd have some doctors would know, oh, she's she's seen multiple other doctors. And when you see the, the surgeon that fixed her, when you and that's going to fix me, when you see the other people, he's the cases like the the stories that his other patients have left as comments or letters they've written or things they've posted on like Google and reviews, you'll see everybody has the same story. So it's not the individual that can't communicate to the doctor. It's the doctor that refuses to listen and communicate properly with the patient. And that's a systemic issue. And he even says that the surgeon, he's like, yeah, the problem is doctors don't listen to their patients. Nope, they do not. They don't listen. So there's thousands and thousands of people that are suffering the same thing that I'm dealing with and what Christina deals with uh, that, you know, there's plenty of other people out there that could be dealing with it. And, you know, I never thought I'd have to be dealing with this. I didn't want to get rear-ended and be in a bad car accident, but that's how it, it happened. I'm lucky that it didn't kill me, right? I'm, I'm lucky I'm still here. It, it has set me back in certain ways. As I said, you know, I, the issues I have, it gives me brain fog. Uh, I used to be able to do literally like five or six things at once. I used to joke because, you know, I have ADHD. So I always used to joke. I, you know, Tina called it my superpower. I could do multiple things at once. Like I could, I could be streaming to you like I am now reading something on my phone and have a video playing and monitor, like be playing you a clip while I'm talking to you at the same time and I wouldn't miss a beat. And now I have a hard time doing, you know, two or three things at once uh, where, unless I think about it beforehand. And it sometimes I, it's like, like I said, it's walking through a fog. It's, it's uh, sometimes it can be scary. You know, I, I think what's really scary is the fact that the medical industrial complex has like, um, they have such hatred and ang like anger towards people that try to like better understand their own diagnoses. Uh, and that's what's scary to me about this whole thing is how they treat the patients. They, it's the Rockefeller medical system. They don't care about taking care of you. They don't. I don't want to. I mean, there are good doctors, but there are the problem is you get the doctors that you have to see are the elite doctors. And then you see these guys and they have uh, or, or women and, um, 
usually the the women I find are way, way better as doctors. They're just, they listen, females listen, men don't. It's like a, it's a thing, right? Uh, it, women will sit and listen to the patient. Female doctors I find are, uh, I, I mean, the younger generation, of course, they're getting brainwashed. But I, I find with my experience, the female doctors are way better doctors than the male doctors. The males are usually very ego. It's like you have to get through that veil of they're either either they're really great doctors and they just want to heal you. And there are many great doctors out there. Not every guy doctor is like this. I'm not bashing male doctors. But I'm just saying the there are overall a lot of doctors are ego driven. But if you break it down, the males, it seems to me in my personal experience and from what I've witnessed over the years that, that the females are usually better at being a doctor because they actually listen to their patients and that the males are not listening to you already when they walk in, right? You're getting their 10, 10 to 15 minutes. And then, you know, their ego is in between them and you, you can't see it, but it's there. It's like a field of energy that's there and it's their ego. You know, I'm the doctor. And if you say, well, you know, I, I looked this up or I read about, Oh, would you read it on the internet? Would you go to WebMD? Would you go blah, 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 blah? Uh, they, they, they don't know what they're talking about. You could be like, well, I'm I'm citing something from the Mayo Clinic. Well, I mean, uh, do, you, do you think they're wrong? I mean, I don't always agree with the Mayo Clinic, but, you know, if you're if they're wrong, explain it to me. But they won't do that. I've, I've gotten into a few arguments with uh, my doctors uh, about what I'm going through uh, like this. It's not like hyperbole. I'm just changing a few, a few things there, but it's pretty much like what the argument was. And they, it, I've seen them worse. And I've argued with Christina's doctors over the years till we found, you know, now it's funny because now that she's had surgery and the post-op report from the surgeon, the doctors that she have now, they, they completely understand her condition and they take it very seriously. But, you know, before it was like, you know, it, you couldn't get them to even look at her and take her seriously. It was ridiculous. And it's sad because there's a lot of people and it's not, I mean, the, the whole insurance end of things is a whole, that's a, a whole different broadcast, but it's sad because the medical professionals that we rely on today don't take care of us properly. So, you know, we, you're going to have to educate yourself because the, the people you're going to go be dealing with, you know, we complain about the world getting stupider. Well, the, the, the part of that world is the medical field. So the nurses, the doctors that you're going to be dealing with, they're the the younger generations, they're they're not thinking the same way. They haven't been programmed the same way. Um, and some of them may not have ego, but they also don't have the level of knowledge that they need. Uh, whereas other ones have ego and the lack of knowledge. And then you get the older ones that they, you know, they're stuck in their ways. And again, it's ego. I find ego is probably the biggest thing that you have to overcome with these doctors. They think, well, I, I went to medical school. Well, I'm glad you went to medical school. That's great. I didn't need to go to medical school to understand. I gave you all a pretty good like layman's terminology. I mean, I didn't explain it to you in all the medical terms that my neurosurgeon said to me when he sat Christina and I down in the room and he went over my MRI and my DMX. But I think I did a pretty good layman's job of breaking down what, what Chiari is and showing you the visuals with the pictures and just trying to give you a quick visual understanding. No, I'm not a neurosurgeon. I know I would never even think of operating on a human being because I'm not a surgeon. You know, I mean, I, I understand certain basic things, you know, I've researched and like self-taught myself certain things, but I'm not going to go out and try to become a neurosurgeon. You know, oh, I, I, I watched a neurosurgery video on YouTube. I think I know what I'm doing. No, I'm, that's not what I'm doing. But if I come into the conversation and I have a mental understanding uh, of what what is going on, like if I can understand the the issue, the pathology that we're dealing with of, you know, the neck and the brain, well, then at least talk to me like, you know, I'm not asking, I'm not trying to come to you like I'm your equal, but you know, and I'm speaking to the doctors and the nurses out there, don't try to act like you're on high and like an elite listen to your patients. If they have an understanding of the nomenclature, listen to them. If they're wrong, then you can point out to them why they're wrong, but don't be dicks about it. I mean, that doesn't get anybody anywhere. Nobody trusts doctors anyway, 
as it is right now with the pandemic. People are have lost their faith in the medical field, for, you know, to a large degree. The last thing we, you know, you go in for a specialist like this, you go in for a special issue like this, last thing you want to be doing is arguing with your doctor. And that's a lot of times what it turns out to be, unless you go to the right people. You see the right people, the right specialists, they take care of you. They'll do good by you. But it's a scary thing. I mean, the, the, the going through Chiari and then, or even cervical, you, you don't have to have both. You could have one or the other. But I have cranial cervical instability and Chiari. And I could tell you that each has their own different things, you know, headaches that, like I said, it makes you feel like your brain is being ripped out through the back of your skull as your skull and your spine are being ripped out. Uh, sometimes it feels like a hot spike being driven through your forehead or right above your eye or sometimes into the side of your head through your temple. Uh, the neck pain when it pops or hurts, it depends. I can't sleep. I don't really sleep too well. Tina tells me I move around a lot. I don't really get very good sleep. I can tell when I wake up. I don't, I don't get solid sleep. Sometimes my neck hurts so bad, I, it wakes me up like every hour and I just end up getting up. Or, you know, sometimes uh, I end up sleeping in until it's, it, you know, drastically altered my sleeping habits. I have to sleep more in order to recover from just being up for a day or doing something the day before. I'm very limited in what I can do physically. I can't lift a lot of stuff because of, um, the damage I could cause to my neck, the pressure that's being put on my spinal cord. I have to be careful with what I do. Sometimes I overdo it. If I over, say you mow your grass, say you're a listener out there and you have a couple acres and you just go out and you're riding a mower and you mow your grass and you spend three hours riding around on your mower, mowing your grass. Uh, you can run around and do other stuff. Next day you get up, you might be a little stiff if, you got, if you're not used to it, but you might be a little stiff here or there. You may maybe have to pop a motion, but you can continue on throughout your day. If I go and mow my grass and spend three hours mowing the grass, the next, I can't do anything for like the next two days. So if I did it on a Monday, I wouldn't be able to do anything until at least Wednesday because I'm going to need Tuesday to recover from Monday. And my head will feel like someone's in there with a sledgehammer just beaning around my brain. Boom, 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 boom. Like it's inside a bell. It hurts to blink. It hurts to like look at things. It hurts to breathe. Like it, anything you do makes your head hurt. Uh, it's horrible. That's usually when the pressure is up. That's why they're going to drill a hole in the back of the head. It's It's horrible. It's horrible. And there are people that like they have to go to work every day and deal with this, like they and they don't even know they have it. They they go to the doctors and the doctors are telling them, "Oh, it's migraine or you I don't know, you're stress." Meanwhile, it's the pressure, you know, because maybe they were in an accident or they had something traumatic happen to them where they they had a, a head and neck injury and they don't even realize it. You know, and uh, the the surgeon that I'm going to see. Uh, you know, him and uh, the guy that invented the DMX and, uh, you know, all these other, sur the, the specialists in Spain, the, these very few doctors that focus on this stuff, it's amazing what they have to fight. You should, I mean, the stories I've heard, I mean, they're, they're surgeons. This guy's a respected neurosurgeon. And, you, you know, you, he has to explain to people's doctors, like their children, like what's going on and what the, the you know, what he did because the doctors can't comprehend it. When if he has to deal with, you know, if he has to talk to one of his patients, regular doctors, or if he's trying to teach other doctors, uh, the, the stories I've heard, you know, from other people, there's a, a great subreddit, r backslash Chiari, at C-H-I-A-R-I. -I. And uh, it's filled with, it's all Chiari patients in there, and they're describing like what they deal with. They're, they're you know, on Facebook, there's a bunch of Chiari groups. Um, and people, I mean, it's real. It really affects, like, this is something people have to deal with. I mean, imagine like a mom raising kids and she's got this going on. Like Christina had this going on. She's a perfect example. She was raising four daughters and she had this injury. And for years she was still being a mom and being, you know, doing what she had to do. 
And yet she was dealing with this injury every day. And it took them years to figure it out. She's not the only person walking around like that. And the medical industrial complex, they're just not trained to look at that kind of stuff. And then, I mean, sometimes they do. There are stories I've seen in there where they went to the doctor and they, they maybe they had a good surgeon and the surgeon was like, oh my God, you've got, you know, traumatic Chiari malformation. You need surgery right away. You need, de you know, decompression or you, maybe you need your, you know, whatever fused in your spine, whatever discs. They run into a good surgeon. They run into someone that knows what they're talking about. But the, the level of doctors that don't know what they're talking about compared to the ones that do know what they're talking about are, uh, it, it's few and far between, you know, and so I, I, I've been checking the, uh, the chat over, uh, I see, um, coming in from YouTube. There's some people saying things about how doctors are a holes. And, uh, one of the chatters just put in that doctors killed her husband and her mother and, uh, she put modern day medicine. Uh, Michelle Miller, she commented in the chat, modern day Western medicine is a damn death trap. And I hold, and she put it in all caps and Michelle, I agree with you. Thank you for commenting. I agree with her. She's correct. It is a death trap. It's, they call it practicing medicine for a reason. Really they do. They don't know what they're doing. And you do, it's, it's, um, you have to keep, you have to like understand your condition. And I really seriously, I urge people, educate yourselves on your condition. I don't mean you stub your toe, run out, check and, you know, see toe pain and look at the, find the worst case scenario and assume that's it. But if you know what you're dealing with or if, if you're having symptoms, look up your symptoms. And if it says, hey, maybe you should talk to a doctor or whatever, then look up good doctors. I could recommend a few. You know, there's, there's a bunch of good doctors out there, uh, that are serious and they know what they're doing. Some of them, unfortunately, um, you know, you, they're expensive. Um, you have to, some of them, your insurance may not cover. Maybe your insurance may not want to pay them. You may have to pay out of pocket, but I mean, is it worth it? I don't want, I, I don't want to be dead. Right. So like I'm willing to, to pay for whatever I got to pay for to get the medical care, whatever I got to do, you know? It sucks that that's what sucks about our medical system is that things are so expensive and that insurance companies really run the show. They don't want to pay doctors. Oh, well, I don't want to pay for that procedure. We, are, we, we don't think you need that procedure. Well, who are you? Well, we have a doctor on staff and our doctor doesn't think you need a procedure. Let me tell you something about doctors on staff. Christina needed her surgery, right? She her insurance had to pay for the hospitalization and all that stuff. Well, the neurosurgeon had to explain to the doctor that worked at the insurance company what he was going to do and why she needed the surgery in order for it to be approved. And I mean, she was luckily the doctor that did it was, you know, she was smart. She understood, but she wasn't a neurosurgeon. I, I, she, I'm trying to remember what she was. She was, it was either she was either a dentist or like an eye doctor or something, but she had nothing to do with neurology, neurosurgery. And yet she was the doctor that was making the decision on whether or not she could have surgery where, or whether or not, it, well, whether or not the insurance company would pay for the surgery, which is basically whether or not she could have surgery. I know they're not saying, well, we're not saying she can't have surgery. No, but if you don't pay for it, you scumbags, then how is she supposed to get it? Mana from heaven. So they do, the insurance companies control your health and it's a scary thing. So like some of the best advice I could give you for your car insurance, make sure you have at least 50,000, if not more coverage for uninsured motorists. I don't care if your state's like, you don't need it. And people are like, oh, if I don't need it, I'm not going to put it on there. Put it on there. Trust me. And make sure you have at least 50 to $60,000 worth of coverage for medical bills, if not more even if it raises your rates and get a dash cam front and rear and have it 
you know, they make them right. The one I have, it's just the two cameras and then it's hardwired into the car for constant power and there's no box or anything. And it's, it takes a little micro SD card. It's like a 256 gig micro SD card. It can record for like three dot solid days of driving before it runs out of space. And it was great because I went right. I was like, download. I sent it to my insurance adjuster. The insurance adjuster was like, oh, they're going to take probably a couple weeks to they're probably going to fight whether or not they want to say it was you know their fault or not. And I sent him the video and he was like, oh, I'm going to submit this. And in less than 24 hours, the girl who hit me, her insurance company was like, yeah, it's 100 percent our client's fault. And the guy said to me that my adjuster said that wouldn't have happened if I didn't have the dash cam video. So they're not a novelty anymore with the amount of people that are on the road now. And everyone's got cars and everyone's dicking around with Facebook and Instagram. And, you know, they're on TikTok or whatever the hell else they're doing, except paying attention to driving the 5,000 pound missile that they're in control of at 40 miles an hour. They're going to, you could get hit. So take the precaution. I did it. You know, I, I got my car. I was like, well, I'm doing a lot of driving. I'm going to, I'm going to put the dash cam in best investment. It paid for itself that day when, uh, you know, it within 24 hours, the insurance company had to concede. I, I mean, it, the fight alone that did not need to occur with the insurance company was worth the 350 bucks. So they're worth it. Get a good one. There's like black view. It's B L A C K V U E as a company. They're great. They make, they're like a top of the line uh, camera company. I would use them. They have some different good options. Uh, that's the company that I use. Great. I'm not, they're not a sponsor. I don't get paid. Uh, but definitely, definitely get a dash cam. Make sure you have enough insurance coverage because if you need medical care, and I mean, if you're in an emergency situation, they take you in the hospital and you're going through the ER or whatever, you could be in there for days and have surgery. They'll do the surgeries on you, but then you're, you know, you get billed, you're going to have a million dollars in bills, you know, $500,000 worth of bills. Whereas <clears throat> they can battle that with your insurance company for that. And the insurance company will, you know, tell them, well, we're not going to pay that or we'll, we'll give you this versus that. You know, there's, they, they can argue their prices. You're, if they come at you with just a bill, you know, who knows what, you know, especially a stay in the hospital. So trust me, you want to make sure you have like that ahead of time. Obviously, you want to make sure you have that protection just in case. You don't want to not have the, the ability to be able to get this taken care of like it. You know, I'm glad that I'm able I that with the coverage and stuff um, from my insurance that I'm going to be able to get my surgery done. Uh, but if I didn't have the coverage I had, I, or that I have, I wouldn't be able to get the surgery done. I wouldn't have been able to do, uh, you know, I would, did, none of this would be happening. I wouldn't, they had to do an epidural on my hip because my, my flexor tendon was stretched and sprained on my hip. It's like permanently stretched. So they had to do a, um, uh, the 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 same thing that they were doing like if a woman was pregnant where they give them an epidural they did the same thing to me except they went into my hip and had to do it into the nerve uh in, in my hip joint there it was pretty interesting but it it it, it fixed me it, you know at least that issue now they got to cut the back of my neck open and draw a hole in the back of my skull it is what it is but i'm lucky that I, you know, had the, the coverage, I had enough to, you know, that there's the surgeon is going to, you know, be able to do the surgery and, you know, I don't have to go to the, the C squad and have them slap some duct tape on the back of my neck and hope everything's going to be okay. Cause that's basically what they would do. I mean, it's, it, it's not an easy thing to live with <clears throat> really. I could sit here and explain and go over, like I said, my symptoms, um, you know, got the head pain, all that stuff. Like I said, sometimes it, f it feels like you're falling through the floor, severe neck pain, muscle spasms, muscle spasms are the worst, uh, or one of the worst parts, you'll have like muscle spasms in your neck, uh, down in your arms, your hands. I get them in my, sometimes it sets off spasms in my stomach, which is horrible. Um, you can obviously imagine what that does to your stomach, right? Uh, it's and they, wicked stomach cramps. It'll feel like someone's squeezing your ribs. 
uh, like uh, Tina refers to it as the boa constrictor squeezing you. And um, it sucks. Like, I mean, severe muscle spasms, you can't control it, you know, and, and that's from the, 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 uh, the combination of the neck uh, and the, the Chiari, uh, the, the cranial cervical instability up at C1 and C2 and the Chiari doing that. And it, it's horrible. Um, some of the things, you know, Tina would just drop like a sack of potatoes when, when before she had surgery, she'd turn her head to the left and <laughs> drop down like a sack of potatoes. Boom. She'd turn to the right, tilt her head back, go down like a sack of potatoes, like just turn off. Like someone walked up and turned a switch off. Boop. And they would tell me she was faking it. I mean, that's the kind of like, like I said, going back to the doctor crap. Oh, she's faking it. She's not faking it. I'm like, how do you fake some shit like that? You know, I said to them, man, she he, she deserves an Academy Award if she's faking. I got into it with a doctor that said that. And I was like, if she's faking it, she deserves an Academy Award for her performance. Because she even fooled the EMTs that had to give her oxygen. But I guess them giving her an oxygen bottle was was fake, too. Right. It was all fake. It's it's the the symptoms can vary so i mean like she would have ataxia she would drop she would stop breathing um but you know you get body-wide muscle spasms as i said if you, you know the you know, visual disturbances you'll see things that aren't there um and your brain it's funny how it'll do it but it's your brain like filling in gaps with stuff so like um a lot of times I think I see my cat, but it's not, he's not there. Like I'll see him run out of the corner of my eye. Sometimes you'll see what look like people. So you'll see silhouettes. It, you, you have to know it's, if you believe in ghosts, I know a lot of the KGRA family here, they like the paranormal. I do paranormal stuff too. I love paranormal stuff. Um, but you have to know that it's a visual hallucination because you'll look out of the corner of your eye and you'll swear to God that there's somebody standing like five or six feet off your left side or your right side. And you have to realize it's a visual hallucination. It's not real. And you can't whip your neck to the side because you whip your neck around. You, you cause yourself problem. So you got to like look, you know, like I said, so I, I one time I saw Predator, the an active camo, not so much him, you know, the creature, but I saw the active camo walking through my living room and it was crazy i knew it wasn't there sometimes i'll ask christina hey do you see this and she'll be like you know if she does then i know it's real or i know the it's on like tv but sometimes it's not sometimes it's in my visual field and she can tell she'll be like do you see things because she went through it so she'll know i'll be looking around and you'll see stuff that's not there it's all part of it um it's depressing. It can make you very depressed. It can make you feel useless. Uh, you know, if you're a man and you, you, you're used to being able to do things, um, when you're in that stupid mode, it, 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 it can make you very frustrated. And one of the other things that you deal with is like, you get angry at stupid shit if your brain is like that you have to like tell yourself you have to learn and tell yourself it's not like you have to chill yourself out there's a lot it there's a lot to it that goes to just living a a, a you know day to day with this it's not an easy thing and again i'm not bitching and moaning i'm just trying to bring some attention to the whole subject because most people don't know this but you know I mean, you may have a family member that is doing you know experiences some of the stuff that i've talked about tonight and they've never seen a doctor and they don't, you just think they're being an a-hole and it's like, no, they, they might have something wrong with them. Were they in an accident? Were they ever, did they ever severe uh, or uh, suffer some from severe head trauma or neck trauma of so, any sort? I mean, there's a lot more to it. The, the brain is a very interesting thing, <clears throat> very interesting organ. And uh, the structure of our neck and how we're built, the engineering of our body is very interesting. And when they're out of whack, it can cause all sorts of different problems. And Chiari is no joke. You know, if, if, if you know someone, you have a loved one that was in a car accident or some sort of head trauma or something. And they're, they're, they're talking about things where they feel like you, you witness it. Maybe they, they talk like they're, you know, like Christina says, a drunken baby. 
um, you know, they kind of, they, they seem out of it. They can't get anything done. You know, um, maybe they're seeing things or having really severe, painful, like debilitating headaches and pain or neck pain or body wide muscle spasms or really severe brain fog where they say, Oh, I feel like I'm melting through the chair or I'm, I'm melting into the floor or I'm falling constantly and it won't stop. You know, they could have a problem. Don't, don't think they're just being a uh, an idiot. Don't just think that they're being silly. Don't just think that they're being a hypochondriac or they're making it up. They need support, first of all. So you should support your loved ones, but don't. Don't be like rolling your eyes like, oh, they're just being a pain in the ass. There, don't do that because they they could be they could be experiencing something severe that you don't you, you know it's, you don't understand. It's hard for you to comprehend what they're going through, but it's real, and it may seem wacky to you. It may seem strange. It may you know, oh, wow, they're. They all these weird symptoms, you know, you go to the doctor with them and the doctor's like, well, it doesn't make any sense. And then, you know, you leave with them. And now you're, you're questioning, are they crazy? Are they nuts? And the doctor can't figure out, go to a different doctor, you know, look up Chiari malformation, look up cranial cervical instability, look up DMXs, look up upright phonar MRIs, do the research. You'll find highly trained medical professionals out there that do know what they're talking about and can take care of you. But you, you're going to have to be their spokesperson. You're going to have to be their mouthpiece for them. You know, don't, even if the doctor gives up them, see if you go to a, one neurologist or two neurologists or neurosurgeons or whatever, and they're, they're not sure, or they're, you know, they're confused or whatever. Don't, don't give up on that person because they could be very well experiencing what, Chiari is. They could be experiencing Chiari or cranial cervical instability or both. And it's debilitating as it is. And it's very depressing to go, to deal with it. And then on top of that, to have a support system that doesn't support you or, or believe you is devastating. So don't, don't do that to them. You know, it take Chiari malformation and cranial cervical instability. Serious, please. It's the whole reason I spent two hours sharing this with you and talking nonstop. I mean, I've been just blah, 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 blah for two hours. The whole reason I did this broadcast was to go over all this and make sure I could shed some light on it. Please take your loved ones seriously if you're if they're experiencing it. And if you're experiencing anything like that, <clears throat> take it serious. Do some research. Uh, look up doctors. See what you can do. Uh, go to, you know, I know Reddit isn't the greatest thing for everybody or for every topic, but R backslash Chiari, C-H-I-A-R-I. -I. Go research it. Read what those people, what they talk about. And if anything that they may, you know, maybe they can, in there, they can direct you to doctors that they may know of that may be close to you that then you can go look up. <clears throat> I hope that this has helped you all. I hope if you have Chiari and you hear this, uh, it gives you a little hope knowing that there's other people out there uh, that are going through it. And I hope this shed some light on it uh, for the listeners and for anybody that's a, you know, could be the a caretaker of one of the listeners, anybody that hears this, whether you're a caretaker or somebody that goes through it. Uh, I hope this just shed some light or gives you some hope, let you not feel so alone. And uh, overall, I hope it just helps more people understand what Kiari is. That's what I try to do here. Uh, with that, we are almost out of time, ladies and gentlemen. So I will leave you with darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. To quote Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I love you all and I'll catch you all again live next week.